And Father, we have come. We have come to worship. We have come to lift you high. We have come to sacrifice. And Father, we have come to obey you. We worship you, O God. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You want to bow down your heads and speak to the Lord that God speak to me through this message. Touch the core of my being. Work on my heart. Work on my mind. Help me to take what you are about to give. Strength, O oh God. Father, we have come. Speak to us. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, as we've been talking about throughout this Easter period, We've done a short revision already from our brother Ivan Chumesi and our brother Moses. And today too, we are continuing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So today we are looking at persecution because of Jesus and the help of the Holy Spirit. So in our convention plan, GCCI Ghana, we are supposed to preach twice. That's in the morning and in the evening. But we are having one service. So just as our brother did a wonderful job yesterday, I pray that I'm also able to combine the two messages and share with you. Amen. The life of Jesus, a huge part of it was with suffering and persecution. Jesus suffered. He was insulted. He was disgraced. He, he was reviled. He was persecuted. By 1 Peter chapter 2, from verse 23, we are told that when he was reviled, he did not revile back. And when he was persecuted, he, he did not threaten, but he committed himself to the one who judged righteously. He was insulted. Some of us, insult is so a powerful thing. For some of us, to be thin is what is powerful to us. Growing up, myself and my sister and my other cousins, you know, when my mom is yelling at them and all that, they'll complain and say that, they, they, I want, they will speak in chi. I'm trying to translate into English. So they will say, what you beat by beating me is better than insulting me. And I didn't understand. Because me, you can insult, I'm even happy, insult me, I'm okay. <laughs> but they had, they, they couldn't contain insult. And up to now, recently I spoke with my cousin and she told me that some of the things her father told her has affected her so much that it took Christ for it to be taken away. So Jesus suffered in all the aspects, the insults, the beatings. He suffered. And the ultimate is the cross. The ultimate suffering was the cross. And since he has been, we have been called by him, suffering is part of our life. So in Acts chapter 9 from verse 16, Jesus was telling Ananias that, see, I have set him, I'm coming, to, I'm about to show him the many things he will suffer for my sake. That's Paul. Many things he will suffer for my sake. We have to understand that by Colossians chapter 1 from verse 13, we are told that God transferred us from the kingdom of darkness and sent us to the kingdom of his beloved son. So we were won by war. We were won by a strong struggle. So it, the, we will be persecuted. We will suffer. But today we are, we are not talking about just any kind of suffering. 
we are talking about Christian suffering. As a church, we are holding the whole disciple-making um, syllabus. So we will talk about it more in, in that aspect. But today, I want to touch on some few points. Last Sunday, our brother also shared on the baptism of suffering. So we are well acquainted. So I'm going to touch on some few areas, and then we'll zoom into the Holy Spirit and the ministration. So suffering that we are talking about here, it's not suffering that you yourself, you have done something, you are, you, you are suffering because of a murder, a lie you told, a fraud work you did. So in First Peter chapter 4, from verse 15 and 16, he said that if we suffer, we shouldn't suffer as a murderer, an evildoer. But when we suffer as Christians, then that we shouldn't be ashamed of it. So we are talking about Christian suffering. Suffering for the sake of Jesus. Suffering for the sake of the gospel. Being persecuted for the sake of the gospel. Hallelujah. You know, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, from verse 11 and 12, Paul was saying that the many sufferings and persecutions that happened to me from Antio in Antioch, in Iconium, in Lystra, these things happened to me, but God, God redeemed me. The Lord redeemed me from them all. Let's read it. 2 Timothy chapter 3 from verse 11. We'll read up to the verse 12. 2 Timothy 3, verse 11 and 12. Yes. Persecutions, afflictions, mm -hmm. which happened to me at Antioch, mm -hmm. at Inconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yes, the verse 12. Yes. Yes. And all who desire to live godly, godly all in who Christ desire Jesus. to lead a godly life, in Christ Jesus. In Christ will, Jesus. Will suffer, will suffer persecution. Jesus was saying in John chapter 15, from verse 19 to 20, he says that, see, the world does not, you are not of the world. The world does not love you. And I've chose you out of the world. So the world hates you. Do you understand? So the, 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 the world and its system is marked against us. The verse 20, he said that, remember that I told you that a servant is not above the master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you. If they accepted my word, they will accept your word. In the Romans chapter 8 from verse 17, he says that if S, then S with God, joint S with Christ, provided we suffer with him so that we may be glorified with him. So suffering, we can't evade it. It's part. If we accept Jesus, when we are called, suffering, persecution, is what we, we have to endure. Hallelujah. And there are people who have gone through suffering. Many examples. In fact, what, what is very close to give us a picture that we too, we will carry cross, we will be persecuted, is Simon of Cyrene. By Matthew chapter 27 from verse 32, he was called and he was forced to carry the cross with Jesus. How about Stephen? He, by Acts chapter 7 from the, verse 1, when he was questioned, answering from verse 2 all the way to the verse 60, this young man summarized the whole journey of God with his people. And he was stoned. He was killed. By Acts chapter 8 from verse 1, we are told that Paul signed the document. He was the one giving the consent that he would be killed. Hallelujah. There are people who have suffered. How about Lazarus? This is the man, God, Jesus had raised many people from the dead. But his resurrection from the dead is a statement. It was at his resurrection that Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. So Lazarus suffered persecution by John chapter 12. Let's read from verse 10 and 11. John chapter 12, verse 10 and 11. Yes. But the chief priest plotted to put Lazarus to death also. The, you see, the resurrection of Lazarus was a statement, was a witness 
of Jesus. And Be it was winning many to Christ. So, because on account of him, yes. many of the Jews went away and believed in Jesus. Yes. They wanted to kill him. They wanted to kill. Persecution was set for him because on account of Lazarus, many gave their life to Jesus. Suffering, we can't evade it. But we, we, we have a way to endure it. Hallelujah. And that way is Jesus. Say Jesus. Jesus. In Colossians chapter 3 from verse 1 to 2, we are told that now that we have been raised with him, let us set our hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right side of God. Let us put our minds not on earthly things, but things above. Colossians, okay. Colossians chapter 2 from 1 and 2. Yes. For I want you to know what a great conflict I have for you. Three, three, okay. one and two. Colossians 3, verse 1 and 2. Yes. If then you were raised with Christ, yes. seek those things which are above. Seek those things which are above. Where Christ is. Where Christ is. Sitting at the right hand of God. Yes. Set your mind on things above, mm -hmm. not on things on earth. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. In the Hebrews chapter 12 from verse 6, verse 2, he says, Fix your eyes on Jesus the author and perfecter of your faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and is sitting at the right side of God Almighty. So fixing our eyes on Jesus, fixing our thoughts on Jesus, fixing our hearts on Jesus. In fact, we, in, in the Acts chapter 7, from verse 55, the Bible says that Stephen filled with the Holy Spirit, gazed into the heavens, and he saw Jesus standing by God. When persecution, suffering comes, we must fix our eyes on Jesus. In Psalm 121, from verse 1, to two, and from verse 1 and 2, he said, I lift up my eyes unto the hills, and where does my help come from? My help comes from the one who created the heavens and the earth. In 1 Peter chapter 5, from verse 7, he said, cast your cares upon him, for he cares for you. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 20, 28, he said, come to me, all you who labor and are heaven laden, and I will give you rest. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer, the perfecter, the forerunner, is our only hope. Hallelujah. But today I also want to whisper a little into your ears that within what we call Christian suffering, not every suffering, you are not supposed to be a partaker of every suffering. And I will explain. In John chapter 8, from verse 59, because of the words of Jesus, they wanted to stone him. John 8, 59. Yes. Then they took up stones to throw at him. Yes. But Jesus hid himself. No, please listen carefully. Jesus hid himself. And went out of the temple. And went out of the This is God. They wanted to stone him. He hid himself. Going through the midst of them and so passed by. In John chapter 7 from verse 3, his brothers were telling him that you, you can't be going about doing all these big, big things and be hiding yourself here under the bed. Not the bed exactly, but... John chapter 7 verse 3. Yes. His brothers therefore said to him, Yes. Depart from here. Yes. And go into Judea. Go to Judea. You can't be doing this thing and be hiding secretly. Go. Manifest yourself for the, your disciples. Let's go on. That your disciples also may see the works that you are doing. Okay. Let's for no on. one does anything in secret. Mm -hmm. While he himself seeks to be known openly. Uh -huh. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. Let's listen to what Jesus said afterwards. Verse 6. Yes. Jesus said to them, Yes. My time has not yet come. My time has not yet come. 
But your time is always ready. You see, there are some, some sufferings you, are, you don't have to be a part of it. There are some, not to deviate, there are some disciples you don't have to pick them and pour yourself inside. Because they will not make the impact. Because he, there is a time, there's an ultimate suffering that he needs to go through. He can't rush into Judea. Not every suffering. Not that you are called that, oh, some people are challenging, the, the, so you rush into it. The, the, there is some arguments you must go into, and there are some arguments you must ignore. Because some, some are not meant for you. It will not make the impact. You, you give the, the people an opportunity to, 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 to say blasphemous things about God. This is why sometimes... Muslims challenge Christians and say, come, let's challenge you on this and this. And we don't show up on some of these topics because you are rather giving them an opportunity to blaspheme God. There is not every suffering that you must be part of. In Matthew chapter 2 from verse 13, Jesus, in fact, one, somebody was asking that who is the wildest guy in the whole of the Bible? Someone said Herod. That guy wanted to kill Jesus and Jesus ran away. The angel of God appeared to Joseph in a dream and told him that, see, take the child to Egypt. Herod wants to kill him. And after some time, I'll give you a word and you shall return back. There is no every, for Jesus to make the impact that he had to make, he, his suffering were selected, were chosen by the Holy Spirit. This is why we need the help of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. This is why we need the help of the Holy Spirit. So Jesus, at his birth in Luke chapter 1, from verse 35, said that the Spirit of God will come upon you. The angel of God was telling Mary, and the powers of the highest will overshadow you, and the child who is to be born shall be called the Son of God. So his very birth was by the Holy Spirit. How about his manifestation in ministry? In Matthew chapter 3, from verse 16 and 17, we are told that immediately he came up out of the water, the heavens opened, and the Spirit of God descended as a dove upon him. And a voice came out of heaven and said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So the Holy Spirit manifested, declared him, showed him to the world. Then he was led. Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit. So the times his brothers are saying, Go. You, you are doing this. You are saying these big, big things in the house. Go and show yourself to your disciple. No one can be doing this work and be hiding in the room. But by the Holy Spirit, he was led. By Luke chapter one from 4 from verse 1, we are told that Jesus, filled with the Holy Spirit, left Jordan and was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness. Luke he, 4 verse 1. Yes. Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Hallelujah. Then he was anointed. Jesus was anointed. He was anointed. He himself said in Luke, in the, in the Luke chapter 4 from verse 18, he said, the sovereign Lord, the Spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, bring recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those who are oppressed. In, in Acts chapter 10, sorry, how God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power, he went about doing good, healing all manner of sickness, disease. Yesterday we heard about it. Compassion for the weak, for the sick, because God was with him. Hallelujah. God was with him. And this is the interesting part. In John chapter 20 from verse 21, Jesus said that, just as the Father sent me, so sent I you. John so we also need the Holy Spirit in order to go through the form of persecution, the persecution that Jesus went through. In fact, in, in Mark chapter 10, from verse 28 all the way to 30, Peter was saying to Jesus, hey, see, you know when somebody is talking to you and the person began, begins by saying, see, you know that they are tired of something. They, they are tired, so see. 
We have left all and we have come to follow. Is he? That, that's a married man. That's a married man. They've left all. He has left all. And, and Jesus' his response is funny. He told them all the things that they have actually lost. And he told them that they will recover it by alongside with persecution. So we need the Holy Spirit in order to go through persecution. So our very birth also, because we had a broken beginning, God tried to restore us. And that part is our spirit. So we are born by the Holy Spirit. In order to have, have a, a close feel, a close experience as Jesus, which we are born by the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 3, from verse 3 all the way to the verse 8, the verse 8, Jesus was explaining about the wind. Let's read it. John chapter 3, verse 8. Yes. I read. The wind blows where it wishes. Yes. And you hear the sound of it, uh -huh. but cannot tell where it comes from. Exactly. And where it goes. Mm -hmm. So is everyone who is born so of the Spirit. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. So we needed to go through a birth which was also facilitated by the Holy Spirit. Then ministry, doing the work of God, going through this persecution. Persecution. So he told his disciples, which is also to us, the apostles, in Luke chapter 24 from verse 49, he said that I send you the promise of the Father. Tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are clothed, you are endued from, with power from on high. So he, we need the Holy Spirit in order to go through the persecution, in order to go through the ministry. We need the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Jesus was led. We too, we need leadership. In the Romans 8, from verse 14, he said, as many as are led by the Spirit, these are the sons of God. We need leadership. We need an anointing. We need an, an, an anointing. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, from verse 21 to 22, he says that he who established us with you and anointed us is God and has given us his spirit as a seal, as a guarantee. We need an anointing. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21 and 22. Yes. Now he who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us as God. Yes. Who also has sealed us and given us the spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. Hallelujah. You want to begin to speak to the Lord in your seat. The spirit of God. Is about to minister to each one of us. Persecution, suffering. If anyone desires to come after me, he must carry his cross daily and follow me. In the Luke 9, verse 23. Spirit of God's strength. Some of us need fresh oil. Some of us need fresh anointing. Some of us need an actual baptism, our first time. You want to shower us with your anointing. You want to shower us, Lord. Before we, be, we, we get on our feet to pray and administration, in Zechariah chapter 4 from verse 6, the Bible says that this is the word of God to Zerubbabel, saying, it's not by might, it is not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. You can't go through the form of suffering Jesus and persecution Jesus went through without the Holy Spirit. When you are persecuted, in the midst of it, you will finish, you will start your course and finish. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Spirit of God, we want your presence. We want your presence. In the verse 9, he says that this hand of Zerubbabel has started this work, began this work, and these same hands will complete it. Where he has taken you from till this point, till you finish, 
whatever persecution from family like Jesus, his brothers, from outsiders, those that are meted out for you by God, the suffering plan predestined for you. Yes. Spirit of God. Holy Spirit moving on. Let's kindly be on our feet.